Hello, my name is Louis Bagot. I am a PhD in reinforcement learning at the University of Antwerp, Belgium, and under supervision of Kevin Metz and Stephen Latre. So the reinforcement learning problem is usually represented with this diagram where the agent performs actions and the environment answers with states, which are observations, and rewards, which are scalars. And basically the goal of reinforcement learning is just to maximize the sum of rewards. Now, that fact alone is interesting because it means that the agent relies uniquely on reward to bring about any behavior and only on reward to guess whether a behavior should be encouraged or whether a behavior should be avoided. Now, it makes it extremely tricky in environments where the rewards are sparse because, for example, on Montezuma's Revenge, a hard exploration game on Atari, most of the time the agent does not get any reward. You only get a reward when you get to the key or the door, which are actually very complex sequences of actions. And before you get to see these rewards, you have actually absolutely no idea what to do. Now, we would like to bring about interesting behaviors even before reward has been observed. And there is actually a very intuitive way to tackle this problem, which is to create artificial rewards, which we're going to call intrinsic rewards. And basically these rewards have uh, for objective to just induce interesting behaviors. And a very interesting study by Patak et al showed that you can get extremely interesting behaviors um, and very complex behaviors from intrinsic rewards alone. In that case, as you see on the screen, it's curiosity based um, where you're trying to surprise yourself, which is just one way of introducing intrinsic rewards. But the point is that you can get very good and interesting behaviors even without extrinsic rewards at all. So now the question we want to ask is how do we use this intrinsic reward signal? Um, so we're going to call it RI in the context of reinforcement learning, we already have an extrinsic reward signal, which is provided by the environment. Well, the main approach is just to sum and made a weighted sum of these two types of rewards. Um, and there are two problems that basically come up with this idea. And um, the main one I would say is the loss of knowledge. So basically you're expecting the intrinsic reward RI to disappear in time. So that's over time you're only left with the extrinsic reward and your agent can be uh, optimal. Uh, the problem with that is that you completely forgot how to explore, which is a very interesting task independent um, behavior that you learned at the beginning. And at the end, you're not only not exploring anymore, but you completely lost that ability to act regardless of the reward. And the other thing is that you only use one intrinsic reward at a time. You, it would be very hard to fine tune betas for more than one intrinsic reward, and it would be hard to entangle, disentangle all the, um, the, the rewards in the sum. Now, the alternative we propose is basically simply to decouple the exploiter and the explorer. So the exploiter is just trained, as you can see with the red arrow, on the extrinsic reward provided by the environment. You just want to exploit whatever you know about the environment. And the explorer is trained with the intrinsic reward uh, so whichever intrinsic reward you might have. Now, since we now have two agents, um, the question might be, when are we going to switch from one to the other? And, well, we don't want to decide that. We want the agent to decide when to switch from one to the other to learn this. And for that, we're going to do it through an explore option. So basically an additional action, temporally extended action, that is going to call the explorer for a while, for a given amount of, of time, and then bring the control back to the exploiter. So we can visualize the idea like this. The exploiter on the left is going to do normal primitive actions, but then can decide to select the explore option. Then it will call the explorer for a set amount of time represented as the timer, and then just give the controller back to the exploiter. So there's a lot of uh, advantages we can see compared to the classical method. And mainly, now you have two distinct policies. So what we brought about about the loss of knowledge, well now, for example, for task transfer, you don't have that problem anymore because you have this separate agent called the Explorer that you can use at any time, um, even when training is done. And if you were to change task, you can now use this Explorer to just train on a new task. And you also have this behavior of exploration anytime during training. So there's no point in time where you forgot how to explore, even if the environment changed, for example, when you changed levels in Mario. And the other thing is that this method is actually extremely straightforward. 
to get multiple intrinsic rewards. If I have a lot of different behaviors, I want to use intrinsic reward. Um, well, you can train all of them off policy and you will just have multiple different agents that can learn different behaviors. So I hope this um, has motivated you to come visit our room. Uh, we will be uh, glad to see you there and goodbye.